Hello. One thing that I like very much about Simple Remedies is their simplicity. I like the fact that even on the telephone I can tell a mother what to do for her child or a husband what to do for his wife and expect that they'll be able to follow these instructions very carefully and uh, get an effective result. So because of uh, the many things, the many advantages that Simple Remedies have, we hope that you'll join us for this program because we'll be discussing a number of Simple Remedies. The following program presents principles designed to promote good health and is not intended to take the place of personalized professional care. The opinions and ideas expressed are those of the speaker. Viewers are encouraged to draw their own conclusions about the information presented. Welcome to Help Yourself to Health with Dr. Agatha Thrash of Uchi Pines Institute. And now, here's your host, Dr. Thrash. I suppose there are probably as many remedies as there are people who practice them multiplied by a hundred because everybody knows everybody who uses simple remedies knows many so I'd like to show you some of the ones that through the years I have learned and I always enjoy learning more and from time to time somebody will tell me a hundred new remedies and uh, so I have a bunch that I would like to show you here and uh, one thing is uh, something that you should have in any good home remedies kit or home kit for home remedies and that's just a simple hand mirror here you can look at things that you cannot see just uh, by looking directly at it you can see on the bottom of the foot you can see on the back on the bottom on the side uh, back of the head and uh, so everybody needs a good hand mirror in the home remedies kit now you need also a number of uh, very simple things, uh, some of the uh, oils that we might call uh, fragrances or essences. Some of those are really quite good. One used for headache is lavender oil and a little cotton pledget wet with lavender oil and pinned to the pillowcase can help a headache that uh, one goes to bed with at night and uh, some other oils one that I like a lot is Melissa oil or also called citronella and uh, it has a citrus smell and uh, the way to use it is simply to wet the finger and then put it on the back and behind the ears because that's where little insects tend to enjoy being and around the wrist can be put uh, in uh, dabs around this is not related to citrus at all except that it smells like uh, citrus fruit but it's a little uh, herb called Melissa uh, uh, and the oil is called Melissa oil then of course there is aloe vera gel and aloe vera plants these uh, this kind of thing can be purchased in any health food store this is a gel and as you can see it is quite gel like and uh, this gel can be rubbed on burns and can be rubbed on scrapes and anything that gets infected that's a very good way to, to use that now this is wintergreen oil of wintergreen it's one of my favorite fragrances I like um, very much the the smell of wintergreen and uh, I use this a lot in massage oil wintergreen has a pain reducing element and if a person has a back ache or a hip ache or a knee ache and uh, you put this in some mineral oil with half alcohol so it's half alcohol half mineral oil a few drops of uh, this oil of um, uh, wintergreen that can be so helpful for any kind of pain so I like that uh, for uh, the uh, uh, home health kit for uh, use, use in that way now a lot of people get the problem that uh, you know about called uh, plantar fasciitis and these little heel cups are very nice for that a heel cup what uh, what we do is to put the person's foot uh, right in uh, the heel cup and they simply wear these inside the shoe now you would think such a simple remedy could it possibly help be helpful for the serious affliction that I have 
on the bottom of my feet, I don't think such a, thing, a simple thing could help. I hear that kind of statement all the time, but I can assure you that these can be helpful. But something that I like probably the very best for, the, for this uh, kind of affliction is a cayenne extract. And I don't have any with me, and I would not smell of it anyway, because it is the red pepper extract, or cayenne extract, and it does, it can uh, set your nasal passages on fire when you smell it. So you don't want to just go around smelling it. But if you have plantar fasciitis, then it is simply painted on uh, the uh, plantar surface, or the, the sole of the foot. Uh, and if you do it for uh, six times a day, for six days, then you can drop down to two times a day, and it often will help you to walk comfortably when nothing else will. So I like that very much. Now I have another thing here to show you, and that is how to make soy milk. I, I don't uh, promote any of the commercial soy milks because of the fact that some of them do have substances that uh, you cannot uh, trust might be the most uh, helpful for you. And so you can purchase these little soy milk, milk makers and um, many of them uh, work by this process. You, uh, simply, they simply have a little mesh uh, affair that holds the soybeans. And I have here a uh, quarter cup of soybeans, and that's the amount that we need to use for this kind of uh, equipment. This particular one is called a soy toy. Uh, it's one of the earlier ones, and uh, there are many uh, of these now, and uh, you can use any of these that you like. They're all very good. In fact, some are improved over this one. And the little soy beans are uh, the little round beans that uh, you're very familiar with. So you simply put a quarter of a cup of the soybeans in this particular type of equipment. Then you can see that it has a blender uh, type of blade, and uh, this is then put on the put in place, and the uh, bowl of it can be filled either to the 1300 or the 1700 cc position. And I don't think you'll be able to see it, but you can tell that the inside is stainless steel, and it has a little marked off area where one can see the the place to fill the uh, hopper of it and uh, uh, very nice it cleans up very easily and I like this very much once you have the water in and uh, you have the uh, you fix this on and it has to go on in exactly the right way sometimes I have loaned my little soy milk maker to people and they put it on with the spout out here that won't work it has to go here where it has the little connection as you can see there then you close it down, very simply done, plug it in, and press start, and you're off and running. 20 minutes later, or 20 up to 27 minutes, I think this one actually requires 27 minutes to, from uh, the time you press start until you're pouring up nice soy milk. It is delicious in flavor, and it's easy to... Uh, flavor up or season in any way you would like. You can put uh, a sweetener with it. You can even start with a juice. Don't tell the manufacturer that because they don't recommend that, I don't think. You can even use, ri use rice in it to make rice milk. That also can be flavored up nicely. Uh, you, can put, you should put a little salt in it, usually about a teaspoonful per quart. Now, with, the, with this uh, kind of equipment, you can make a product very good for the bones, good for the heart, good for the arteries. It uh, decelerates the rate at which people age. I like that about it. It also helps the eyes. It uh, preserves our delicate senses into advanced old age. So there are many good things about soy, and I'm probably not even mentioning half of the good benefits of soy. So I recommend that you make your own soy milk so that you get the full benefit of the soy and not just a, a part of it as you might with some kind of commercial product or even get a product that 
isn't uh, helpful at all, but is actually counterproductive for the health. Now, I have asked Rhonda Clark to join me. Rhonda, welcome. Thank you. Rhonda is one of my colleagues at UT Pines and uh, works with me in lecturing, but also works as a counselor uh, with our uh, other counseling staff there at yes. UT Pines. So I'm so glad you can be with me today, and I'd like to know what you're going to tell people. Well, I wanted to share today a special hydrotherapy type of home remedy type of treatment. Good. It's called a salt glow. Good. And these are becoming popular in beauty salons, health spas, as an exfoliating treatment, which makes the skin very soft and smooth. But there's many healthful properties to a salt glow. Yes, as well. I like the salt glow for just uh, toning up if you uh, feel a little bit tired or yes. uh, under the weather. Uh, if you know someone who knows how to do a salt glow, uh, just feel marvelous. Yeah. It boosts the immune system. You get over the, the uh, cold or the flu yes. a lot quicker, and I like it a lot. I've you, also uh, uh, seen it used for intractable epilepsy, really? the kind where the person has a seizure, and then before they can uh, fully uh, awaken from that one, they get another seizure mm -hmm. and another seizure. And in a field situation one time where there was no physician available anywhere, no drugs, nothing available anywhere we had such a patient mm -hmm. so we put the patient in a bathtub and gave a salt glow uh -huh. and uh, the patient stopped seizing and wow. we were just thanking the Lord of course we had a, a team of people in the next room praying for the Lord's blessing and I'm sure that yeah. the Lord gave us his special blessing uh, and assisted our simple treatment with success Wow you know I know that um Another group of patients that uh, often can't take a regular hydrotherapy type of treatment, especially a hot treatment, are diabetic patients. Mm -hmm. Sometimes because they've lost the sensation in their extremities, and so we worry about burning them. But also, just metabolically, sometimes the heating treatments that we give at the Lifestyle Center increase the metabolism to a point that it's difficult for the diabetic body to keep up with that. But the salt glow is a wonderful way of increasing circulation and helping in the diabetic patient who can't take a regular heating treatment. Yes. So I've invited Miss Ariana Hartsfield to okay. come up. And Ariana. if she'll come and join us today, she's going to be our demonstratee. Good. And I'll let me demonstrate this wonderful treatment known as a salt glow. The type of salt that you use in a salt glow is important. Table salt will be too fine and will not, be, um, not give enough of a rub or friction to the skin. And you certainly don't want to use the large rock salt crystals like uh, people have made homemade ice cream with or used to clear snow and ice off of their driveway. That would be too coarse. What we recommend is known as kosher salt or a coarse salt. And this can be obtained really any place where people do canning, pickling, those places sell this type of salt. It's a nice medium-sized grain of salt. And you'll notice as I pour it here in the basin, it, it has a nice... Um, you know, large crystal size to it. The, each chunk of the salt is a little big, more than what you would see that you would sprinkle on your food. Yeah, the table salt uh, just melts and dissolves, and uh, pretty soon you're, you have no salt. You just have a solution. <laughs> a little saline glow. <laughs> <laughs> and I've not put as much in the bowl here as you would if you were going to be doing the salt glow on your entire body. And that's the intent of the treatment, beginning with the extremities and working towards the center of the body, towards the heart, to begin with the rubbing of this salt onto the body. And so you might need a much larger amount than what I've put here in the bowl for our demonstration. You do want to wet this salt a bit to have it just wet enough to stick to the skin, but you don't want it soupy. There really will take very little water to moisten this bit of salt here for our treatment. Just a couple little drops of water may be enough. We'll see here. And as you mix it with your fingers, it actually helps you get a better feeling if you have the right consistency. And this looks, well, maybe put a little bit more water, um, just enough so that it'll stick without, you don't want it too wet. You want to help keep those salt granules intact as you can because they're what's providing the friction, which is the beneficial component of this treatment. And Ariana, if you'd go ahead and raise up a sleeve for me, we'll demonstrate on your arm here the technique. And I'll put a little towel here under us so we try not to get too much salt all over everything. You want to lay uh, your arm a little bit more over on the top. There we go. And let's turn your hand the other way. I think we can see it here 
on the skin a little bit better. You want to take about a teaspoonful, oh thank you Dr. Thrash, a teaspoonful or a little bit more of the salt into your hand to begin the friction and it goes on the skin and you rub rather briskly. Gonna, it might sting just a little actually and you want to get it more and then as you run out you just get a little more and when you're doing this on yourself a nice circular motion like this might be good but you want to try to get a nice red glow to the skin we'll do one more time here <laughs> and you need to watch the patient and make sure they're not uh, you haven't taken off the top layer of skin <laughs> You can see how her skin is pinking up very nicely. Mm -hmm. It's looking quite pink. And this is the intent of the treatment, is to be very warming, very stimulating. And when you're doing it on yourself, again, start with your arms working up, get your chest and abdomen. If you need any help getting your back, you can put some of the salt solution in a towel and then scrape along your back. And I guess we can start brushing this off. Um, or I also brought along a back brush. This is something that you could use to just put down into the salt solution itself and really get it full of the salt and then could do your own back with this. The ending of the treatment is to just rinse off in a tepid shower and get all of the salt off your skin. You don't want to leave any of that on your skin at all. So rinse off well and Miss uh, Hartsfield will be rinsing off here as she uh, finishes helping me and then rest. It's nice to rest for a bit after the treatment. If you can't, or you might have to just go on to work. So yeah. <laughs> if you take it to help yourself liven up, um, know that uh, it might make you a little sweaty or just stimulate you enough. Uh, don't let that surprise you. <laughs> it is a stimulatory treatment, but then after a while it is relaxing. So if you, if you go to work, you might fall asleep over your keyboard. <laughs> Now, I'd like to thank you so much, oh, you're so Rhonda. I appreciate you showing the salt glow. It's an sure. important treatment, and I like it very much. Now, I'd like to have Ariana help me with a couple of other treatments. One is uh, this, this uh, lumbar uh, roll, which is for a, a very large person, but it can be very helpful. And uh, if you'll hold your arms up, I'll just uh, put it around. And uh, it can be just, maybe I'll just go ahead and put it all the way around and uh, hold that right there for me. And I'll just put this right here and uh, then around to this side. And uh, the roll should be, the lumbar support should be quite, quite tight, as you can see here, firmly tight. And uh, that is quite helpful. Uh, and uh, people who are very active, who lift things, or who are lying in bed a long time, and uh, they begin to get some uh, difficulty because of lying in bed, the low back begins to hurt. For these individuals, if they uh, wear one of these, it can be very helpful. People who have to lie in a hospital bed with the knees up, Ariana, I need you for another thing, so don't go away. Uh, they have to uh, be with their knees up for a long time and the bed is propped up. Sometimes they will get a low back pain as well. Now, Ariana, I'd like to show this little device right here. While this is a massage assistant, it uh, is, and it looks as if it's a little spider. It's a little thing made of wood, so if you'll turn your back, uh, this is so nice. Does that feel good, Ariana? Yes. Isn't that nice? This just uh, rubs across sore muscles. And uh, by the way, massage strokes are more for muscle than they are for bone. So don't get uh, too vigorous with a massage stroke that comes across a bone like that. You have to be very careful not to do that, but to stay with the muscles. And a person who is not a very big person, as uh, Ariana is not, then you don't want to, uh, they are not uh, very hefty. Coming down across the uh, vertebral spines will not be pleasant for such a person. So you should go to one side or the other, but not straight down the spine like this. And of course, the uh, muscles that are down here and the muscles that are on the arms, these can be nicely uh, worked with. Uh, with a very simple thing such as this. Thank you so much, Ariana. Appreciate my your pleasure. being my helper. Now, another thing that I like to see in the uh, home health kit is an eye wash cup. 
These are available from pharmacies. They just have a little depression in them, such as this, and this depression can uh, hold several kinds of fluid. Saline is one kind of fluid that this holds, and the saline is made up with one teaspoon of salt to one level pint of water. Now, a pint is two cups or one half quart. So either way, anyway, you can measure one teaspoon, two cups of water, and uh, that gives saline. Fill the cup with the saline, then it is put right against the eye in this fashion, and uh, while one is bending over or up like this, one can bat the eyes multiple times, and that, of course, will cause the uh, eye to get washed out. It's very good in uh, cases of conjunctivitis, or in uh, cases of uh, something getting into the eye. So that can be most helpful. Now, for women, I recommend that they get some little device such as this, a, a little barbell for women. And I have two of these right at my uh, desk. And uh, no matter what I'm doing at my desk, if I'm only using one hand, then I use the other hand. If I don't have to concentrate too much with this hand, say with writing, then I use this hand just to work my hands up and down. But I really like to use both of them. So if I am sitting talking with someone on a speakerphone, then I can be doing all sorts of things with uh, dumbbells, and uh, they don't know. They don't have to know that I'm doing my exercises while I'm also talking on the telephone. That can be very nice, and of course all sorts of curls can be done in this way. So uh, just over the head or around behind the back, uh, anyway, that uh, you can find to move the dumbbells. This exercises different muscle sets. Now another thing that I like to have at my desk for a uh, long time uh, simple things that I do that don't require too much concentration is uh, work with this. So you just work with this a bit and uh, again this can be uh, uh, stretched in any one of many different ways. You can stretch it up and uh, do it on diagonals in this way. You can put it over the back and of course it can be done this way. You can do it uh, fast or slow and if you, when you do it fast, you get a different kind of reaction than you do when you do it slowly. So in all manner of ways, you can do this. Even uh, at times, I have had to watch videos or, or do some kind of uh, work of that nature. So I just uh, uh, hook it over my toes and uh, stretch it out in that way, one after the other. Uh, and uh, it's easy to... Uh, find different ways and different muscle groups that can be exercised with this kind of thing. Another kind of exerciser is this kind of exerciser. I'm going to tell you, although I don't expect you really to believe me, that working out <laughs> with a little hand uh, exerciser such as this can help you not to have glaucoma. Now glaucoma is an increased pressure inside the eyes which can cause blindness. So of course it's quite serious. And when I read this first in a medical journal I thought uh, it was the Journal of the American Medical Association and I thought oh the journal has become spiritualistic because what about working out with a hand exerciser such as this could keep a person from getting glaucoma or could treat the glaucoma if you already have it. And uh, the idea is that as you work out with a hand exerciser such as this, it uh, increases the carbon dioxide in the blood uh, just a little, and uh, that relaxes the uh, tension inside the eyes. Now anything that relaxes the tension inside the eyes will also relax the blood pressure. So if a person has high blood pressure, working out with one of these little hand exercisers can be very helpful. And so people who do spend a lot of time telephoning, uh, they can, uh, when the 
uh, when it's not too distracting to do some little exercising such as this, one can simply work out with a little exerciser such as this uh, in uh, times of this kind of stress. Now, here is another thing that I like to see in people's home health kit, and this is uh, a venomous bite extractor. Now, the venomous bite extractor can be used for a number of different kinds of venomous bites, and uh, the instructions usually come with such a kit. And uh, you can see this kit has uh, a little shaver in it to uh, remove hair, and uh, the, the hair is uh, sometimes in the way of the extractor, so the hair needs, may need to be removed. So the little razor and then the extractor itself with the little cups. And here is the largest cup, which could be used for a small pit viper, I suppose. And it's simply fastened on in this way. And then the plunger is pulled back and uh, with this put on the place where the, where the uh, person was bitten, and uh, uh, then the, the extractor used to pull the, to extract the venom. And uh, it's not difficult at all to use this kind of equipment, but uh, uh, can be quite effective. Now, once you have extracted the venom, a lot of people feel, well, what I need to do is to cut the area. But that isn't good. That's not the best thing to do. The best thing to do is to use the antivenin, which you can get at almost any uh, emergency room where uh, they treat snake bites. And uh, you can also uh, use charcoal. If you have cut the area and you put charcoal on a fresh wound, you will get a tattoo. It's uh, inevitable because the uh, charcoal will become enmeshed in the fibrous tissue or the skin or the epidermis and uh, it will remain there uh, forever. So it's best not to cut uh, but rather to use other things. The cutting has not been shown to be effective. Then for brown recluse spider bites you can also do an extraction if you get to it right away and uh, then put the charcoal compresses on or soak the part if it's a part that you can put into a charcoal bath you can put it in uh, a charcoal bath and uh, change the uh, charcoal water very frequently. We like at first to change it every 30 minutes. That probably is not necessary, but it gives us something to do and makes us feel that we're trying our very best to keep the person from getting a major slough from a brown recluse spider bite. Hope these remedies have been very helpful to you. May the Lord bless you. Hello. One thing that I like very much about Simple Remedies is their simplicity. I like the fact that even on the telephone I can tell a mother what to do for her child or a husband what to do for his wife and expect that they'll be able to follow these instructions very carefully and uh, get an effective result. So because of uh, the many things, the many advantages that Simple Remedies have, we hope that you'll join us for this program because we'll be discussing a number of simple remedies. The following program presents principles designed to promote good health and is not intended to take the place of personalized professional care. The opinions and ideas expressed are those of the speaker. Viewers are encouraged to draw their own conclusions about the information presented. Welcome to Help Yourself to Health with Dr. Agatha Thrash of Uchi Pines Institute. And now, here's your host, Dr. Thrash. I suppose there are probably as many remedies 
as there are people who practice them multiplied by a hundred because everybody knows everybody who uses simple remedies knows many so I'd like to show you some of the ones that through the years I have learned and I always enjoy learning more and from time to time somebody will tell me a hundred new remedies and uh, so I have a bunch that I would like to show you here and uh, one thing is uh, something that you should have in any good home remedies kit or home kit for home remedies and that's just a simple hand mirror here you can look at things that you cannot see just uh, by looking directly at it you can see on the bottom of the foot you can see on the back on the bottom on the side uh, back of the head and uh, so everybody needs a good hand mirror in the home remedies kit now you need also a number of uh, very simple things uh, some of the uh, oils that we might call uh, fragrances or essences some of those are really quite good one used for headache is lavender oil and a little cotton pledget wet with lavender oil and pinned to the pillowcase can help a headache that uh, one goes to bed with at night and uh, some other oils one that I like a lot is Melissa oil or also called citronella and uh, it has a citrus smell and uh, the way to use it is simply to wet the finger and then put it on the back and behind the ears because that's where little insects tend to enjoy being and around the wrist can be put uh, in uh, dabs around this is not related to citrus at all except that it smells like uh, citrus fruit but it's a little uh, herb called Melissa uh, uh, and the oil is pain. So I like that uh, for uh, the uh, uh, home health kit for uh, use, use in that way. Now a lot of people get the problem that uh, you know about called uh, plantar fasciitis. And these little heel cups are very nice for that. A heel cup, what, uh, what we do is to put the person's foot uh, right in uh, the heel cup and they simply wear these inside the shoe now you would think such a simple remedy could it possibly help be helpful for the serious affliction that I have on the bottom of my feet I don't think such a thing a simple thing could help I hear that kind of statement all the time but I can assure you that these can be helpful but something that I like probably the very best for the for this uh, kind of affliction is a cayenne extract and I don't have any with me and I would not smell of it anyway because it is the red it's called Melissa oil then of course there is aloe vera gel and aloe vera plants these uh, this kind of thing can be purchased in any health food store this is a gel and as you can see it is quite gel like and uh, this gel can be rubbed on burns and can be rubbed on scrapes and anything that gets infected that's uh, a very good uh, way to, to use that now this is wintergreen oil of wintergreen it's one of my favorite fragrances I like um, very much the the smell of wintergreen and uh, I use this a lot in massage oil wintergreen has a pain reducing element and if a person has a back ache or a hip ache or a knee ache and uh, you put this in some mineral oil with half alcohol so it's half alcohol half mineral oil a few drops of uh, this oil of um, uh, wintergreen that can be so helpful for any kind of 